How you guys doing? How are you? I'm good. I'm all right. Sunday. Yeah, well Enjoy my are. day off. <laughs> oh, I'm interrupting your day off. Oh, no, it's all right. <laughs> oh, good, man. Well, we'll get straight into the big news, your next fight. Yes, um, April the 17th against Natan Levy. Um, what do you know about Levy and what you need to do to beat him in this one? Uh, you know, I, I, I know he has a karate black belt, uh, karate uh, background. Um, I think he, you know, likes to grapple. He's, he's, I don't think he's a, a straight uh, karate stand-up type of guy. He's a, he's a mixed martial artist. So, um, you know, I, I just need to come prepared. Uh, you know, I always come, you know, train hard and, uh, I just need to make sure I'm, I'm mentally focused and prepared for fight night and, uh, you know, just do what I do. And I think, uh, I think I got this one. I'm feeling pretty good about it. That's always the best way to go into it. Um, so have you, have you like visualized the fight? How do you see it playing out in your mind? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I've, I've done a lot of uh, visualization on it. Uh, I, for, from what I could tell, he, he doesn't seem to do well when he's pressured and has to kind of be in a dog fight, you know? So I want to be aggressive. I want to, I want to be pushing forward. I want to make him feel uncomfortable, you know? So, uh, I Gosh, think yeah. he's gonna start. I, I believe I'm a better striker. Uh, I, I think he's gonna, the pressure will start turning him into a desperate wrestler. And, uh, you know, I think I'm a better grappler as well. So, um, I'm excited. I, I think it's going to be a fun fight. I know he's a very tough opponent and, uh, in his own right. So I think it's going to be, you know, uh, an exciting, exciting challenge for sure. So just to summarize from that, you're just looking to kind of strike and force him into the grappling kind of thing and just impose your will a bit. Yeah. 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 You know, he's, he's only had two fights, I think at lightweight, um, you know, he doesn't have much experience. Even the opponents he's fought doesn't have much experience. So I, uh, I'm looking to use my size and uh, cardio and strength and aggression and uh, experience and, uh, you know, really take it to him. Definitely a good matchup. I'm, I'm really looking forward to watching that one. So, um, so how's your camping going? And I understand you suffered a bit of an injury a few months ago. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, yeah. So camp's been great. Uh, the injury was I, I fractured my orbital and uh, actually I had to have surgery and I have a plate now on the inside of my orbital. Um, you know, no issues though. There, it's I'm, I'm cleared. I've I've been in training for you know a couple months now. So uh, you know, it's just a distant memory in the past now. <laughs> uh, well, so yeah. you Ready made armor in there now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe if it happens again, I'm gonna have him put a laser eye in there or something. <laughs> yeah, so that's <laughs> fully healed now, though. So you're, there's there's no there's no lasting damage from that then. Nope, nope. It's all healed. Uh, you know, I I haven't had any issues. I I can't feel like in this area, which is fine. I don't need to feel in that area anyways. But besides that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm good to go. Yeah, little by little, the bionic man. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, your UFC so far. I mean, um, to be honest, you've just faced really high level grapplers, and yeah. um, it's fair to say, it's fair to say, probably because of that, that's the reason your record in UFC has been a little bit inconsistent so far. So, um, have have you made any changes to your training camp this time uh, to yeah. fight another good wrestler? Yeah, so I've I've made the most the biggest change I've made since my last fight is uh you know I I really dug into the mental aspect of you know fighting and of uh, training and and approaching your fights and everything like that. Um, you know I I have fought some very tough opponents, but you know I feel I was capable of winning every one of those fights, and um you know I feel like I've been almost kind of my worst enemy, you know, is in my head, you know, going into these fights. And 
I feel like I got that worked out. Uh, I've been working uh, very hard with a mental coach, um, doing a lot of, you know, digging on my own, you know, through reading or listening to a lot of different types of, you know, mental training type books or breathing books or, you know, things all along those lines. And uh, I'm feeling really good mentally. You know, I feel like I have a, a totally different outlook on, on my everything, you know, mentally than I did, you know, before that last fight. Um, and I think it's gonna, gonna really show, you know, uh, I think I'm gonna start really fighting to my true potential and um, I'm excited. Uh, I'm ready to go out there and have some fun and, you know, just, just kind of start going the direction I want to go and then the direction I need to go, you know, uh, in order to accomplish push my goals and the things I've set out for myself and uh yeah yeah that that that's really interesting because um it's obviously quite a, a well-known cliche about um fighting is you know 80 <laughs> percent mental and 20 yeah. percent physical so um you're I guess you're really buying into that and trying to yeah trying to get more involved in that mental side of the of the game I I definitely have um and like I said I I've feel like it has helped a lot in pretty much every area of my life, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'm going uh, I'm to keep digging into that and keep growing and, you know, hopefully keep climbing these ranks. <laughs> That's the plan. So, so what's, what, what exactly have you done on that side of things then? Just read, read books and, and yeah. a bit of meditation so I, maybe? Yeah, I, I meet with a mental coach. Uh, Salt Garrison is his name. He's a very good mental coach. Um, I, I work with him once a week, every other week. Um, you know, and we just we just talk about things. He gives me, like, mental exercises type of things to do. Uh, you know, helps me really put things in perspective. Helps me deal with, you know, certain mindsets that are negative, you know. Um, giving me the ability to, you know, change my outlook on certain things or focus and, you know, let some pressures that I always constantly put on myself go, uh, you know, things, things along those lines. Um, yeah. And I, uh, yeah. I really like the results I've been getting. <laughs> yeah. It's an, it's an interesting perspective, obviously, because, um, not, not many people have uh, talked to me about going down that road. So it's interesting to hear. Yeah. Um, I hope, yeah. I hope it all pans out for you well. Uh, yeah. But going back to your opponent, Natan Levy, um, obviously you both coming from the LFA. Do you think he's got what it takes to make the transition like you have um, to the UFC? You know, I, I, I'm sure he does. Uh, you know, he, you know, it, when I got into the UFC, I was 10 and two. I, my like opponent win loss ratio was like almost close to a hundred to like, 30. It was like my last, you know, handful of fights before getting in the UFC. My opponent, uh, like I said, win ratio was like almost 70 to 30, or it was something along those lines. I don't remember exactly. It was it was pretty high though. You know what I mean? Like I faced a lot of people, a lot of uh, I had a lot of experience, and I think that experience for him is is the one thing that's lacking. But you know that's that's something that you know that's fixable that's and that doesn't always mean everything you know what i mean it, de it definitely helps but sure, yeah. uh, he's talented so i'm sure he'll he'll just well and uh i i have no doubt he's gonna bring it to me and it's gonna be a hell of a fight but uh you know i, I just think that experience factor does play a role in in like these type of fights especially it's his first fight in the ufc you know that's that's a big step up. Um, you know, I fought some really hard people and, uh, yeah, I, I, I just, I'm just real comfortable with where I am right now, you know, immensely. And, uh, my confidence is really high. Uh, physically I've, I've always felt on point and ready to go, you know, just now that mental aspect is, is matching that physical aspect. And, uh, I just think it's going to be a tough night for him. I just, you know, it's a fight. Anything can happen. I'm going to be ready for every scenario, but uh, I, I'm definitely planning on going out there and being dominant. That's for sure. I, I really, 
want to make a statement in this fight um, and and start, you know, my own type of reign, you know, uh, working my way up. A good run, yeah. So, um, I mean, yeah. you're coming from the LFA, obviously, as the full champ. So, um, yeah. what do you find are the biggest differences from fighting in the LFA to fighting in the UFC? Oh, man, uh, just just the level. It is it is a different level when you you step up from that regional scene. Um, LFA is obviously the top of the re- regional scene. Uh and a lot of those guys do end up in the UFC and uh, other high-level promotions. So it is a, a very good, you know, stepping stone. But once you get over to the LFC, or I'm sorry, UFC, uh, these guys are are from all over the world. They're world class. You know, they they all have you know high-level experience for the most part themselves. And uh, you know, it is a, a bit of adjustment. Um, Mostly the mental aspect, I felt like it was is the biggest adjustment I needed to make. Uh, I, I felt like I, I have all the the ability to compete with all these guys and the skills and all that, you know, that comes along with the physical aspect of it. Um, I just, like I said, I needed to catch up that mental side a little bit and focus in on that. And now that I have, I, I feel like I'm a much more complete and smarter fighter and uh yeah so um taking into account that that title fight you're actually the underdog going into that would would you say that's the biggest moment in your career so far winning that lightweight title yeah yeah i, I felt that was that was a minute uh a moment i was very you know that's probably one of my favorite moments to date you know that was that was a huge fight i I uh, felt like I was going in there. They were bringing me in there to lose, you know. That 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 guy was the next big thing, and major, uh, you know, I was the major underdog and everything else. And uh, he won the first round, and then from there on, I just poured it on his ass and, you know, finished him in the fifth. And uh, you know, it was, it was very satisfying. And uh, yeah, it was definitely one of my favorite moments in my fighting career so far. Awesome, man, and obviously it was that it was that win that gave you the uh, platform to get into the UFC. Uh, yeah, talk me through that moment. Well, like when you found out that the UFC wanted to sign you, what was that like? Yeah, it was man, it was, it was surreal. You know, I, most people get into the sport uh, wanting to get to the top or to be, you know, a top guy, get to the best. You know, course, yeah. so yeah, so to finally get that call up and be like, damn, I'm. I'm here, like I'm getting there, and uh, it was it was really cool. It was it almost didn't feel real for a little bit. Um, it, it was it was awesome, man. It's it's really hard to explain, but it was it was I know, really I get cool. It. I, get it. <laughs> I get it. I mean, it's it's the, it's the pinnacle, isn't it? It's what, yeah. it's what you fight yeah. for, man. So it's, exactly. It's, it's top of the top. It's, it's the best fighters in the world. Yeah. So um, looking back over your UFC career so far, it's only been a short one, but. You've had a few fights now. Um, what do you think are the biggest things you've learned so far in a mixed martial arts way? Yeah. Uh, you know, I feel like I do truly belong here at, at in this top top league promotion. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I feel like I've, you know, most of every one of my opponents were either Olympic medalist or a high level black belt who winning you know big tournaments and things like that and had all these other accolades and I felt like I was in one in every one of those fights you know I don't think uh, I really got blown out in any of them uh maybe that's just my own perspective I don't know but uh yeah no yeah, they're, they're close fights I mean obviously that last one didn't go quite as well i got caught that early in the first round and got so but other than that i think every fight's been you know close um yeah and i i just i i just adjusting to this level it's like it's like when you turn amateur to pro like you can do all this stuff before you turn pro but once you turn pro you're you're back to the bottom <laughs> it's sort of the same oh yeah you yeah know, well, like, back up. You, yeah, yeah, like I worked all my way up to the top of the 
regional scene where I was, you know, the number one regional guy. And then I make it to the UFC and then, you know what, you're right back to the bottom and it all starts all over again. Every, every aspect of, you know, building yourself back up and all these things. And, uh, you know, and I, I'm just excited to go out there and, and really, uh, start building, you know what I mean? Like it's been a bit of a rough start. Uh, you know, I've never in my life gone, win one, lose one, win one, lose one. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm ready to put a streak together, and uh, I'm looking forward, you know, to this year. Uh, you know, I have some uh, big goals that, with my new mental training, along with you know all my physical training, I, I feel like it's going to be a really big, good year for me, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for it. Good stuff, man. Um, you touched obviously on your on your camp and training and earlier, and. Um, you train obviously with some real high level monsters at um, elevation fight teams. So yeah, how would you how would you think that since since you moved there a few years ago now? Um, how would you think that's helped your development as a fighter and as a person, really? Yeah, uh, you know we we won team of the year last year. Uh, we have a lot of top level guys, and getting to work with these people every day. You know Neil Magny, Justin Gaethje, Corey Sanhagen, uh, Curtis Blades. Um, I know there's even, you know, Usman's been training out here with us. Uh, you know, there's there's a big list. And to be able to be in the room with these guys, and not only in the room, but doing rounds with them and learning from them and, you know, I'm being friends and, like, we all do, you know, stuff outside of training together. And, like, it's, it's just, you know, the, the things I learn from it and get from it is just, like, immeasurable for my career. If if I, you know, I moved out here on a whim, kind of, I I just picked up and moved out one day and uh, it is, is, was just kind of a leap of faith. Uh, and it's definitely been the, the best decision of my life. I There's no doubt in my mind I would not be where I am right now if I uh, didn't live here and move, make the move here and uh, took that risk, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's it's definitely been life-changing being here. So um, these training partners mentioned there, I mean, obviously some of the best fighters in the world there. So uh, Gaethje, who's obviously one of the top, top uh, guys in your your division, your weight class, what's it like training with him on a daily basis? Does he does he help? Does he teach you? Does he help you out with stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's such a, a good guy, you know. He's all of our teammates, all of them are, are, we're a very close team, you know what I mean? Like, we're not like a, a giant team who have like 50 plus people, you know, but we have a very solid group that are, we're all really close. No one really has, no one has a, a big ego about anything. We all help each other um, wherever we can, whether that's in the cage or outside of the cage. Uh, and I think that's what really makes us different and, um, you know, is plays a big part in our success is, uh, you know, we all keep each other honest and make each other work hard and uh, we all learn from each other and grow from each other. And uh, it's, it's just really cool. Um, obviously, you mentioned Neil Magny there. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Neil Magny. He's, um, I've had him yeah. on the pod before. He's such a great guy. I understand yeah, he, he was is. the one who sort of took you under his wing and, and, and yeah. showed you around and made you feel at home. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's funny because uh, the very first time I ever came out here to Colorado, um, I'm, I'm originally from Illinois. I, I lived, grew up there my whole life. I moved to Colorado about five years ago, actually. In, in April will be five years um, so when I first came out here, I had no, really no intentions on moving here or anything like that. I was just coming out here to train for a week. Uh, and that's, that's just all it was going to be. And I, I got out here and I just absolutely loved everything about, you know, being here training with the team, like as far as the training partners, the, the city, the being in Colorado, everything just felt really good. And, uh, that first week out being out here, we were, I was staying in a hotel, obviously. And, uh, Neil, uh, being the awesome guy he is, uh, he's like, Hey, yeah, if you ever come back out, you know, I rent out rooms at my house and, you know, you can stay at the house for cheaper and this and that. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, 
so I, I, long story short, I, I went home on a Sunday, went to work on a Monday. I was like, you know what? I'm going to put in for a transfer. I don't, not like I'll actually get it. I didn't think at least. And, uh, at the time I was working in at Walmart in a distribution center. Um, like I said, I put in for a transfer out of state transfers were really hard to get. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to get it, but shit, what's it hurt to, you know, to try uh, I put in for the transfer. They literally called me the next day and was like, hey, you got that transfer. When can you move? I was like, well, shit, when do you need to know? And they're like, we need to know within like 24 hours. So, you know, meeting Neil, I, I text, he gave us his number and everything. I was like, hey, man, uh, I think I'm going to move out there. Do, do you still have a room? Like, is it okay if I come and, you know, live there and, you know, rent a room for you and everything? He's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. And it's, it's kind of funny because looking back, he, he later told me, he's like, yeah, I didn't think you were going to come. And uh, <laughs> yeah. he, he was actually in, uh, it was when he was getting fighting Hector Lombard uh, was when I got there. So he wasn't even home, like in his house when, when I got there uh, and he got home from that fight. I was like, oh shit, he's actually here. And uh, you know, <laughs> We've been, I, I lived with him for, uh, you know, a while and I still live in his house. He, he has a, a different house now, but he rents this house out and, uh, yeah, he's, he's been, I think that pretty much every single one of my fights since joining the team, uh, he's been in my corner and all of my fights pretty much leading up to the UFC, um, and he's someone who's, he's always there for me, you know? fighting and not fighting uh and he's been such a great uh inspiration and role model to me and uh i i you know i love the dude i can't say no one can say anything bad about him he is such a good heart and uh definitely uh thankful for meeting him and uh he's helped me immensely to get to where i'm at for sure yeah, I mean i love him too i've met him man so uh, I yeah think I get so, um, <laughs> You mentioned Illinois there. Do you ever get a chance to go back when you're not in camp? Go back home and that, see your friends and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I usually go home after every fight, uh, you know, visit family. My fiance actually lives there still. Um, she's moving here soon, but it's been a, a long two years apart, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it's tough. Uh, but, we, you know, we make it work. And like I said, I go back. Uh, pretty much every chance I can to spend time with her and, and see my family and everything else. So, uh, yeah, I go, I go back, like I said, quite a bit, you know, holidays, uh, after every fight, I give myself usually about two weeks after a fight of downtime. Uh, and after those two weeks, I'm, I'm right back into training and everything else. So, uh, I usually spend that two weeks there with her. And, uh, then once that's up, game time again <laughs> always man so um getting back to fighting then um what are your thoughts on the current situation in the lightweight division do you think Khabib's coming back do you think they should give the title take the title off him what do you think's going on there yeah I mean he, listening to him talk it sounds like he has no like absolutely no like uh wantingness or willingness to come back he seems pretty set in retirement so uh i say let the man retire if that's what he wants to do um i don't know dana's holding on to he's coming back at least one more fight i don't know if he will yeah i i i honestly don't think he will um but who knows maybe he will maybe he won't i don't think it'll happen uh so i think uh you know, there's there's some big fights coming up that you know in the lightweight division. Uh, Gaethje, you know, is right on that doorstep. Uh, Michael Chandler, uh, Charles Oliveira. Um, those are like the main names that are coming to mind right now. That I think if Khabib is done, and I think more than likely he is, that you know th- these guys are gonna be uh, at holding that title here soon you know or at least fighting for it so uh yeah i i don't think he's coming back but who knows <laughs> yeah it, it's a it's a bit of a circus and all that um yeah so yeah i mean 
2020 was a difficult year for you know everybody really um how did the covid outbreak affect you and your training personally you know what 2020 was for the most part one of my best years of being alive <laughs> the the outbreak awesome. really really didn't affect me all that much i was able to train just the same we had to switch you know certain things up a little bit smaller groups and you know different little different training schedule but i was still able to get the work in no problem um and as far as like opportunity for me it increased you know during the lock-in i was able to fight three times last year with no issue at all i would have easily have got four fights in if i you know it wasn't for the injury um and with the lockdown you know fighters were at a higher commodity because they're putting on these shows pretty much every weekend and um so you you were able to fight almost as much as you wanted because they were putting on so many shows and uh so like i said it it worked out well for me i was i was i made the best of a shitty situation obviously a pandemic is unfortunate and uh you know i i don't i didn't like all the restrictions as you know most people didn't and all that stuff um and i i feel for anyone who's lost someone to covid um but me personally you know i it didn't affect me too much like i said if anything it almost was in my favor just because of my opportunities uh to fight and everything were higher and things like that so of course yeah yeah, yeah so i mean uh, thanks Thankfully, 2021 is going to be the end of this pandemic, it looks yeah. like, you know, with the vaccine and all that. Um, so maybe switching the question up a little bit, not so much your, uh, the opportunities to fight. What, how has it affected you, like, fighting in the empty arenas? Are you looking forward to getting the fans back and just having a bit more of an atmosphere and fight week and stuff and at the weigh-ins and that? You know, it is, it is really different. Uh, it's really quiet in there. And it's almost like a, a training room type of atmosphere. So for me, I... I, I didn't mind it necessarily. Like I, the whole process, like how fast they get us in there and out and, and everything else. It was really, uh, I liked it. Cause it was, you, you know, you, you get there like an hour before you fight, you warm up, you fight. And then afterwards you're doing your interviews and this and that, and then they're shipping you back off to the hotel and you're like free and done for the night. So, um, I Shit. liked it in that, that aspect. It was, it's fast. It's efficient. Uh, you know, you're in, you're out and you're free. And, um, so I liked it as far as the, the crowds and everything, it, it was, you know, pros and cons to it. The atmosphere with all the fans and every, you know, the energy and the crowd and everything there, that, that is really cool too. You know what I mean? Um, honestly though, once, once the fight gets started, I don't, you that's nothing to you. Well, at least for me anyways, I don't even notice the noise, the people, this, that, you know what I mean? You're just lasered in on the fight. Um, the, the only difference I felt like for me anyways is, is just the walkout. Uh, it, it is really, you know, cool to feel that energy to, you know, have all those cheers or maybe booze in some cases and all that stuff as you're walking out. Uh, it really gets you pretty hyped, but uh, I'm, I'm, I, I really don't mind the closed crowd and everything. Cause like I said, it's, it's a kind of a, a training room type of atmosphere. So it's, it kind of takes a little stress off of you a little bit. Um, you know, that, that type of thing. So I'm, I'm cool with yeah. that. Or I, <laughs> it doesn't matter to me if I, I, my next five fights are without crowds or my next, you know, two or without crowds and then the fans are back, you know, um, I, I do hope we do bring the fans back at some point, uh, as far as when and that type of thing, it, to me, it, it makes no difference. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the same as many fighters I've spoken to really yeah. a lot of fighters actually quite enjoyed the, 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 the like being in the zone more of the fight, you know, like you said, it's more like yeah. a training room sort of environment. So you can hear your yeah. coaches better and all that stuff. Yeah. You can hear the punches landing, that sort of thing, rather yeah, than the roar like of the crowd. Yeah. It's really cool to watch these cards too. Uh, 
because like you said you can hear the hits you can hear oh, like yeah. all that thing type of things that normally you can't really notice as much uh with the crowds there so i think like i said it's pros and cons to both sides of it um yeah it's it's whatever <laughs> So um, we touched on it briefly earlier, but what are your goals for this year then? What's your main aim? Uh, you know, this this year I feel like is a very important year for me being right now I'm, I'm two and three in the UFC. So my first and foremost goal this year is to be positive on my contract and, you know, positive on my win-loss. Uh, I would love to get three wins this year. Um I would love, well, obviously I want to fight, win every fight I'm in. Uh, that's not always, you know, practical though at this level. <laughs> uh, I would love to get four fights. Like I said, I'd love to be undefeated in those four fights um, and put together a streak and, and really start, you know, putting my stamp on this division um, and growing, growing my name a little bit. I know I'm, I'm pretty new to the UFC, uh, only a couple fights in. Um, so yeah, I, that's my main goal this year is to get a streak and, you know, start, start making a name for myself. Good stuff, man. I'm looking forward to watching your rise, uh, in 2021. So, um, before we wrap this up in Austin, is there anyone that you want to mention or, or any shout outs you want to give? Uh, you know, just, just, I think all the people who support me and, um, you know, all the fans and everything else, my family, uh, my coaches, teammates, all those guys. Uh, yeah, it's, it's about it. <laughs> cool. So, um, thanks for tuning in, everybody. You can see Austin take on Natan Levy on April the 17th at UFC Fight Night 189. Um, Austin, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, and no problem. Have a great thanks day, man. Me. You too, man. <laughs>